Welcome to Campus Chat, a look at the people, the opportunities, programs, and happenings at Western Nevada College. Campus Chat is made possible by the Western Nevada College Foundation. Hello and welcome to Campus Chat. My name is Helene Morris and this is the show about the people and programs of Western Nevada College. Uh, we're glad you're with us today. At the time of this taping, the United States is celebrating the 10th annual National Mentoring Month. And the definition of a mentor is a wise and trusted friend and guide. And how we're going to use the definition of mentor today is in relationship to uh, being a mentor for a youth, where a person acts as a role model, uh, participating in the youth's life, showing that young uh, woman or man that uh, someone cares about them and helping them create opportunities. And my guests today are with the Mentor Center of Western Nevada, which is a part of the Boys and Girls Club of Western Nevada. And sitting right next to me is Bridget Gordon. She is the outreach specialist for the Mentor Center. And then sitting next to Bridget is Paul Young, who is the program coordinator. Both of them are mentors. Uh, they're young mentors, but I uh, saw Paul's picture in the paper the other day, and you've been a mentor for how long? Six years. Six years? Yep. Well, did you start when you were 10? or? I started actually <laughs> when I was 18, 18. Um, my senior year, and it ended up being my senior project, and just kept rolling. Yeah, that was a great story. Yeah, it was, it's been a lot of fun, a lot of fun. That's great. And so we're going to talk about uh, the Mentor Center's relationship with Western Nevada College and how this program has really changed the lives of the not only the mentors, but the youth that have been involved in that program. So the Mentor Center was founded in 2000, and the, or the college made a donation of in-kind space. And how has that been working out? How It's really, we're really lucky. When it started, the people of Carson City really wanted to start their own Mentor Center. So they got funds from the hospital and from the city and the school district, as well as a federal funded program so um, we were able to start it here on the college campus and it's nice because it gives some of our families who otherwise don't feel a connection to higher education right. a way to sort of connect um, with the community and with WNC. Yeah that's great now where on campus are you located what building? We are at the Reynolds building and we're in um, 104B behind the main help desk in the Reynolds. Yes, I've actually been there and they've got three people crammed into <laughs> about uh, 10 by 20 space, but it's really uh, well organized, I must say. It's an efficient space. Yeah, it's an efficient space. It's, it's nice though. It's, it's really beautiful. nice furniture. And so how long have you been with the Mentor Center as a worker, as the coordinator? Let's see, I've been with them since April of 2009. So um, coming up on a year. And how long have you been with the center? And I came on in April of this year. Okay. So, but I volunteered with them for about ten years. Yeah. Oh, really? So yeah. I've been a mentor. I've, for... um, I've been doing like projects and you know helping organize events and things for about for 10 free. Years. Has your mom been yeah. using you as uh, slave labor? Yeah. That's what I thought. Uh, Bridget's mom, Ruth Gordon, <laughs> is the director of the mentor center. She's done an outstanding job, and so. She's uh, probably recruited the family yeah. into working yeah. and, and given you that love of mentoring. So what age groups do you serve generally? Six to 17. Six to 17? Yep. Yeah, I, I was a mentor. I've had two different uh, youth and I really enjoyed it. Although um, your mom's been working on, not your mom, her mom's <laughs> been working on me to be a mentor. Again, I just haven't made the time, but I really did enjoy it. And they're lifelong friendships aren't they absolutely we we expect uh, we ask a year from our mentors but we really expect that they create a relationship that lasts the rest of their lives mm -hmm. so i mean in the case of your mentee coming back to here to have that support no matter what age she was throughout her life really makes a big difference right that's great so what are does mentoring work i mean does is it worth all the effort that you're putting into it <laughs> <laughs> absolutely absolutely like uh with with jacob my my mentee i've seen a lot like of just growth through the years like when i got him he was really shy and now it, it's like you can't get him to not be like i'm the best like he got a new job and he was like had a suit on and everything <laughs> so it's just funny to see how confident he's that's growing. great and national surveys have shown that it reduces the rates of drug use and gang violence and as well as increasing relationships with peers and teachers um, and actually Texas is starting a brand new survey so there'll be even more 
information. Information coming. I went to, I used to work for Cooperative Extension as the 4-H coordinator, and I went to a, a workshop where Marion Wright Edelman was the speaker, and she um, was the founder of the some executive institute for children, and she, one of the quotes she said was, if, if, one, if each child just had one advocate, there would be no teen suicide, and I thought, oh, man, that's pretty powerful. How does someone, and I know for um, my mentee, um, the, my big thing was her was get a high school education. Mm -hmm. You know, get, at least make sure you get that degree, and by God, she did it. She got her degree, and I was really proud of her. Um, how does a person become a mentor? Well, they can call the Mentor Center or visit our website, and then um, we talk with them. They fill out an application, we do a background check, mm -hmm. and then we do an initial training, like a three-hour training about what's expected of you as a mentor and um, what, we, what we can do to support you through the journey. And then we really find a kid that matches that mentor's personality. So we don't just go down a list and match because of numbers. We'll find, right. a, we'll find a mentee that matches that mentor. Yeah, that's great. So we're going to talk more about the Mentor Center and um, more about becoming a mentor. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Campus Chat. My name is Helene Morris and I'm here with Bridget Gordon and Paul Young at the Mentor Center of Western Nevada, which is a program of the Boys and Girls Club of Western Nevada. And we're talking about um, how does a person become a mentor. So uh, they get a background check, they go through a training, and then you match them up with the person. Now, how do these young children come to you? How do you select these young kids? They come from all over the community. Um, we had, we're in with the schools and and then we also get word of mouth, and so we'll have parents call us up and say, ask questions like, is my kid right for the program? And we get to know the kids just like we get to know the mentors. And then after we get to know them, then we match them up with the mentors. And so a parent shouldn't be afraid uh, to have their child in this program. I think it takes a lot for a parent to understand that, hey, I need some help here. Uh, I'm not going to be afraid to ask for help, right? Yeah, a lot of our kids are from families where there are two parents. But there's just a lot of other siblings, or both the parents are working really hard hours, or they just see that this kid could use someone else to listen to them. Right. So a lot of times it's just about extra support for the parents. Now, about the training, you said it's three hours long. Um, what does that include, though? What kind of help do you get? We talk about the developmental stages of mentoring, and we talk about um, what activities you can do with the kid, mm -hmm. um, what kind of things you bring to the table already, the, the gifts that you already have to share with someone. I remember I taught um, my gal how to drive, and I remember the first time, <laughs> well, she, she kind of knew how to drive, I think. Well, no, she didn't, because I remember we were, I let her drive on Main Street once, and we went, she was going about 40, I'm going, what are you doing? She goes, well, the speed limit is like 45. I'm going, okay, pull off the street. <laughs> we're, getting, we're going 25. We are not going any faster. And so, are, are you in need of volunteers now? Absolutely, absolutely. How many, do you have kids mm -hmm. on the waiting list? We have about 46 kids um, on the waiting list right now. A lot of them oh came from gosh. the Boys and Girls Club. But then we also started a new program, and we have 13 high schoolers waiting for mentors as well. Oh, and that's the um, new EPIC program. Yes. And so what does that stand for? It stands for Educational Preparation and Improvement for College. Okay, so, the, so tell me about it. So that, that's where you have high school students as mentors? Yes. Oh, okay. Or no, we mentor high school students. Oh, okay. So we'll get, we start sophomore year. And so why we chose sophomore year is we get one year of kind of high school education background. And so we talk to the counselors and stuff about the kids that we get in. And then how Epic started was a kid named Skylar Greenman approached us, and he wanted to do it for his Eagle Scout project. And so we've been doing it for two years, and this is the first year it's going to be known as EPIC. 
And this year, it's going to be the year we truly modeled it after um, the Ascent program. And that is a partnership between Hug High and UNR. Oh, okay. And so EPIC is going to be with Carson High and Western Nevada College? Right. So we, we, we decided that this would be a good on-ramp for WNC's Bridge to Success anyways. We're starting earlier. Um, we went into the high school and we talked to all the sophomore classes. And the students that were interested had to really um, get their applications to us and kind of take the initiative themselves. So these kids have come to us with the things that they want to do. Um, for example, we have a girl that wants to be a psychologist. So then our, our hope is that we can find a mentor in the community that for the next four years, so the rest of sophomore year, junior year, senior year, oh and the first year of, of college, will help them do things like job shadow different places, apply for scholarships. Um, so, on, so rather than it being traditional mentoring, that, it's that as well. They're going right. to be focused on college. And so this is, uh, you have your epic yeah. t-shirts on. So this is a local pro uh, program. We started it, You yeah. started it. And didn't you get some grant funding for this program? Were yeah. you the only mentor program to get grant funding? or is that we, we're, As the Mentor Center, we're the only mentoring program in the state of Nevada to receive federal stimulus money through the Amachi program. Oh, uh huh. So that's where oh, the bulk of our money that's comes. That's great. But for Epic, we got um, money from Partnership Carson City to start the EPIC program um, within our, our program. And so you have 13 high school students right now waiting to be matched up. So you haven't really started the program, you're hoping to start it. Yeah, we have, um, we've interviewed about 11 of the, the mentees that are gonna be in it. We have two more interviews, and then we're gonna start making phone calls and hopefully finding people in the fields where they're, the kids we've talked to are interested. Oh, that's great. It sounds like a great program, and I'm really glad to hear about your connection to Bridge to Success which is a really powerful program that the college has, reaching out to all the local high schools and, and um, getting more students to come to college right after graduation. So how, um, why don't you give us the phone numbers? I mean, we need people who are willing to give of themselves to help uh, an entire generation of students become productive and um, just better citizens, and so we need your help. And so, Bridget, why don't you give us your phone number that they can call? So the phone number to the Mentor Center is 775-445-3346. And any of the, us that work in the office would be happy to answer any questions. We also have a website, so through WNC, it's mentor.wnc.edu. Oh, that's great. So it's a, a nice, short, pretty short uh, yeah. email. Do you, so you went to college? We have just like a few seconds left. I'm still, still going to college, still going to business school. Got business about two school? more semesters left at UNR. But I did attend WNC, and I mean, mm -hmm. I loved it. Like, yeah. Class sizes, the teachers were probably the best teachers I've had in my whole college career. Yeah, and so we're here and now. Get an education, get a degree. And one right. of our mentees actually went through school at WNC and UNR, and she graduated and is a mentor herself now. Yeah, so we great? really support going to WNC for sure. Yeah, there, or, or you know, any college, but especially here, yeah. we want to get students involved at Western Nevada College. You guys have done an excellent job. Ruth Gordon has done a great job, Boys and Girls Club of Western Nevada, in maintaining this program that really does make a difference. So thank you so much for being on the show. Really appreciate it and all the good work you've done. Thank you so thank much. Thank you. And thank you and stay tuned. We'll be right back. back to Campus Chat. My name is Helene Morris and this segment we're going to be talking about Western Nevada College, College's Specialty Crop Institute which is headquartered in Fallon. I think most of us know that uh, tucked away in the high desert landscape of Nevada is the wonderful agricultural oasis of Fallon where they have a lot of different types of crops and our guests today are Ann Loella who is the project or program director for the Specialty Crop Institute and sitting next to Ann is Buzz Sharman, who is the Dean of the Fallon Campus and Rural Development. So nice to have you on the show. Thank Excellent. you for having us. And I didn't know you grew up on a farm, Buzz. 
Did you? I did. I grew up on a dairy farm in Northern California. Oh, you did? Mm -hmm. I did. It was a great way to grow up. Oh, I bet. My grandkids envy my life that I had as a child. <laughs> so, so um, dairy farm, you didn't really, did you grow crops or spe Yeah, we grew our own alfalfa and stuff, uh -huh. but we didn't, we weren't into specialty crops. Uh, we, we just grew for the cows, the, the hay and the corn and stuff yeah. like that. So what is a specialty crop? Well, especially crop, uh, I'm going to turn this over to Ann, but really, especially crops in about any kind of vegetable or, or whatever you can buy in a store, whether it's uh, tomatoes lavender. or, yeah, lavender is, yeah. is also, but maybe Ann could explain it more. That, Buzz, you've got it right, okay. yeah. It's pretty much what you'd find in the grocery store, um, edible foods that people buy or lavender and flowers and things like that. It's not things, that alfalfa and things or grains that aren't specialty crops. Right, so... When you have, we're on your dairy farm, alfalfa is not a specialty crop. That's a no. big crop. No, but the, the whole life that, that, that I went through as a kid, it, it's always developed kind of an interest in agriculture. And at Western, being such a, an academically focused institution, we've never really had an opportunity to get into agriculture until we took on the opportunity to get into Specialty Crop Institute. So really your background um, and your lifestyle as a young child really helped uh, develop the Specialty Crop Institute because wasn't it your, I mean it was your idea basically. It was right? that, there were some folks in Fallon who came to me and said, you know we've always known that you've wanted to do something agriculturally and we've tried some different things before with with egg mechanics and th some things at the Fallon campus but um, this was the thing that we wanted to give a try to, and we thought there was really a need out there to educate people about specialty crops. And, it, and that has truly been the case, but has. we'll talk about that in just it a has. minute. So, Ann, how did you become involved with the Specialty Crop Institute? She was unemployed. And she, <laughs> <laughs> she couldn't find a job, and so like many people who have specialty crops now, I, I mean, you, you find that, don't you? People who lost their way, and they've kind of, some people I've seen have started a specialty crop product. But how did you get involved? Really? Well, I, I, it's true, I yeah. was unemployed, <laughs> but before that, I guess there are some benefits to the recession. This is probably one of them, but um, I'm an event manager by trade, and I've also worked with farmers markets, and for several years before that, I was involved with the small farm community. So when I was unemployed and this grant opportunity came up, I was available for the job. So that's pretty much how it happened, yes. Yeah, that's great. So. There is always a silver lining somewhere out there. She was really uh, our first pick to try to make this thing happen because of her experience in events coordination and also her work with Nevada Grown and some of the other agricultural groups in the north. She really knew what specialty crops were all about and she was involved in it. And so uh, we handpicked her to try to come in here and work with us. Mm -hmm. And then being unemployed, I looked at it, and we were, we were grant funded. And I looked at it, and I said, you know, if I keep writing grants and we get more awards, we can keep the program going. And that's, that's right. pretty much, we've been doing that for two years. So, um, yeah, it's been great. It's yeah. been very successful. So tell us about some of the classes you've offered, because, um, I mean, the attendance, I bet if you've kept track of those statistics, it's just been highly successful, phenomenally yeah. successful. Yeah. Yes. So tell us about some of the classes you've offered. And Well, when we started, we thought if we get we'll be happy if 20 people come in our classes right now. Actually, they're selling out two weeks before, or I should say they're filling, the classrooms are, but our last one had 100 people coming to it. But Some of the things that we're doing are like, uh, we're getting into grapes uh, with viticulture workshops. Mm -hmm. um, we've also done a couple on lavender. Uh, mainly we're getting people, small growers, who want to come in and learn if they could really do this commercially. If they can take a very small plot of land that they may have Maybe they have five acres or one acre or sometimes just their backyard. Is it worth it to do this? Um, Anne's been able to go out and work at uh, Indian reservations mm -hmm. and, and help, uh, help folks get back into gardening for themselves and also for produce for their schools and for their community. Um, what We've just finished our fourth workshop in hoop houses, I think it is. And, yes, uh, that's Tremendous been attendance for yeah. those things. Uh, yeah, I, I think what amazed me... Um, is that you can take some of the people who are really successful just have like an acre to five acres mm -hmm. and they're growing um, just I mean an amazing amount yeah. of crops and making a, a business you know in our original intent and it still is is that farmers that are growing alfalfa and, and a lot of the crops like that is that we look and they diversify I mean just in looking at the economy and the business part of it which is because we're really looking at small farmers is that mm -hmm. 
they diversify part of that operation and go into specialty crops where they're direct marketing it. And so we're seeing, like Buzz said, we're seeing a lot more new farmers or people with small acres coming in, but also farmers that have, you know, ranchers and, and people with a lot of acres right. that are saying, gosh, maybe I'll put a couple acres into specialty crops. Yeah, so. that's great. So we'll be right back. Stay right with us. We're going to take a quick break. Back to Campus Chat. My name is Helene Morris. We're talking with Ann Loella and Buzz Sharman uh, with Western Nevada College's Specialty Crop Institute. And you just mentioned it briefly about the Hoop House uh, workshop that you just had, but that was in Uniontown. And that, how did that turn out? Did you have a lot of people sign up for that? More than 100. We thought oh. maybe we would oh. have 50, and yeah. <laughs> we had more than 100 people come. We were flabbergasted. Yeah, and then That's you just had one um, just recently. Another one, right? How did that turn out? We've had four so far. Four? Yeah, the one uh -huh. in Yarrington, which we thought, because it's a, you know in January, out in the rural areas, we thought, well, it'll be a little quieter because people won't want to travel right. uh, you know, 90 minutes to get there or more. And that we actually did a live construction of a, a hoop house. So it was actually, I think people wanted to see it go up and, and get a really, oh, really? really hands-on experience. What yeah. are the uh, basic materials in a hoop house? Well, you can buy a commercial kit, and it'll cost you know anywhere from five, six, seven thousand dollars, which your you know commercial farmers will do, and it'll get a ten-year life out of it. But the one that we build is Utah State University, and it can cost you anywhere from five hundred to a thousand dollars. Just made a PVC pipe and rebar, and you build, take a hoop and, in a nutshell, put uh, greenhouse plastic over it. So how does it? How do you get it to stand up to the Nevada winds, though? That, that'd That's be my rebar. Word. That's what That's the rebar is for. Because you put the PVC pipe, you know, just extend it over to the rebar, and um, that'll keep it up. There's some bracing that goes on between the the PVC pipe, but uh, but it'll it'll hang in there. But the but a, a hoop house of this size is not meant to last for years and years and years. Right. So if you can get it through one or two seasons, that's really what it's designed for. And how many people does it take? Like two, can two people build one on their own, or do you need more people to come in and mm -hmm. help you? No, two could do that. Two could do that. Oh, yeah. I mean, people have been known to, well, it, it takes a few because the, the, where you really need the people is throwing the plastic over the top of it. So, But you can so, build them any size. I mean, people build uh -huh. them six by eight or oh, really? the one we built was 14 by, it was over 80 feet long. Mm -hmm. That's huge. Yeah, but people, will, yep. So it really yeah. does extend the growing season for crops. It does. Is that we, the purpose of yeah. a hoop house? We, uh, we, we did a, a project at Oahe Indian Reservation. And uh, up there, uh, th they're fairly high. They're, they're about 90 miles north of Elko. But they invited us to come up and to see their terrain and get an idea of what we have. And they, they planted a small garden at the high school. Mm -hmm. And it, by the time the, the, the tomatoes were ready to harvest, they were freezing. <laughs> and so uh, we built a hoop house along with their help. I mean, they were in, very mm -hmm. involved in it. And they built the hoop house with the direction of some of the experts that Ann brought in. And now you go up there, and there, all this, these vegetables are under a hoop house, and they're protected, oh, and great. they're producing for their local community. Yeah. How do they get the sunshine through the? It comes through the plastic. Through, yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. It just comes through the plastic. So you use a clear so. plastic. Mm -hmm. Then we went up there one September, and like Buzz said, everything had frozen. It was like the middle of September. And the following year, we went up in the spring and built a hoop house, and it was a, a lush jungle inside this hoop house. Great. It that's really, great. I got, it gave me goosebumps. Well, that's the neat yeah. thing about these workshops from the Specialty Crop Institute. They're very practical. Uh, we have lecturing, and we bring in, I mean, nationally renowned experts right. uh, with I mean, the really, grant dollars really that we have. Top quality. But then we get people out to farms, and we actually, they get their hands dirty, whether it's something to do with viticulture, they go out to a, a you know, a, a vineyard and actually get busy with it, or in the case of hoop houses or lavender, they're actually getting out there and doing some things and learning by getting involved. Yeah, that's great. Now, coming up in March, you have the, is it the second annual Nevada Small Conference? I think people want to know about that so they can come and 
Tell us about yeah. that. And actually, there have been several Nevada Small Farm Conference, but there was a lapse for probably three or four years because there was really nobody to ad put it on, administer and with the infrastructure to do it. So last year, Western Nevada College stepped forward, and so we are the lead organization. We do the registrations, mm -hmm. take care of the finances and so everything. So when uh, is it this and, year? Uh, March 10th through 12th. And, and, so. how and it's much in is Fallon. It? It's in Fallon. Yeah. Uh -huh. At it's the convention center. At the center? convention center. And, and at the a, a lot of the workshops come over and, and yeah. are at the college. We've expanded. Last year we had 160 people and we were bursting at the seams. So we're actually expanding it to the college this year. We're adding an extra day. We're going to do pre conference workshops on Thursday. Oh, that's and great. And then on Saturday, the theme of it this year is know your farmer, know your food. I mean, we want to grow the small, far, small farm industry, and in order that, you need more customers. You need more community people knowing why you need local food. Right. So Saturday is going to be, uh, we're going to be talking about school gardens, community gardens, urban, urban farming. So we want to bring a lot of people from Reno and Las Vegas and the urban areas So out anyone to, can uh, attend. You can attend mm -hmm. the pre-conference sessions on Thursday, but the basic conference is Friday and Saturday. Mm -hmm. Is there a cost to attend? Yes. How much is um, it? The conference, I believe, is going to be $75 for two days. The pre-conference workshop is extra. And then we have a one day only for Saturday, too, which is a half day. Oh, so. that's good. You can go and to our website and, and get the all the... The WNC website? Mm -hmm. Yes. So we'll have it up on the screen, probably. Yep. Right yes. Mm -hmm. It'll be up there. Mm -hmm. And um, how is this workshop funded by someone other than... I mean, because you do bring in nationally renowned speakers. I mean, you bring in top mm -hmm. quality people. So. Mm -hmm. They don't come in for free, do they? We no. have a lot of partners. <laughs> a lot yeah. of partners. What, who are some of those partners? Well, the grants we've written, most have been through the Nevada Department of Agriculture, which is USDA, and then also um, Risk Management uh, Education. It's the, another government one. So we've been getting government grants, and we're constantly looking for funding to yeah. keep, well, you know, actually to expand it because there's such a demand. There is a demand. And so if you're interested in growing a specialty crop or just maybe even doing something in your backyard, go to Western Nevada College's Nevada Small Farm Conference, March 10th through the 12th. And Buzz, do they contact you or Ann? Um, Ann, but if they go to the WNC website, yeah. they'll go down to Specialty Crop Institute. They can get all the contact information right there. Okay, that's great. Well, thank mm -hmm. you again for the great job you've done and mm -hmm. really uh, providing a service that the community needs. It's got to be exciting to be it's involved fun. in this. It's fun. It's it fun, is. huh? And thank you for giving me a job. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yes, thank you. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. <laughs> okay, and thank you for watching this edition of Campus Chat. We'll see you next month. This has been Campus Chat, a monthly program from Western Nevada College. Campus Chat is made possible by the Western Nevada College Foundation.